Hey everyone, welcome back to the God Life Facebook page. Um, we're happy you're here. Um, there might not be too many people on live right now, but we can wait a few seconds and let people get on. Um, my name's Kyle. Once again, I'm here to host another Facebook Live. And again, we have Jan with us today. Jan, how are you doing? I'm doing well. <laughs> all things considered, yeah. <laughs> all, all things considered, yes. But God is gracious. God is good all the time. He is. Um, so we're going to talk about loneliness today. That's the devotional topic for the week on God Life. So as more of you are getting on, uh, and some of you might be on already, the question we want to ask you guys is, who's your who's your best friend? Who's your closest friend? And if um, if they're on Facebook too, you can tag them in this video and then they'll be able to watch it later and they'll know that you consider them your best friend, which would be a nice thing. <laughs> um, but as more people get on, you can continue to tag your friends. I'll pray for us and then we'll get going. Lord, we thank you for this time and this opportunity to discuss something that is very uh, difficult and challenging and isolating, um, which is loneliness in this time of uh, quarantine and isolation, Lord, we pray that you'd be the one that we turn to when we feel lonely and that uh, many people watching this would be encouraged and uh, inspired to even their relationships with you as a result of uh, our conversation. We love you and we trust you with everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So um, again, you can continue to tag your friends in the comments, your best friend, uh, to let them know that you love them. And then they'll also be able to watch this devotional uh, Facebook Live as well. Um, like I said, our devotional this week is called I, uh, Are You Forgotten by God? Uh, it's about loneliness. So I'm just going to turn it over to Jan. She was not the the author of this devotional, but I think God had her as the guest for this devotional for a specific reason, and we'll get into that. For such a time as this, as the Bible says, huh? Yep. Yes. Um, loneliness uh, at the best of times is hard for us because we feel isolated. We feel like nobody loves us, um, like we're useless. And there are, there's just so many, many emotions that can come with it. And during this time, um, we often wonder, like the, the devotional said, are you forgotten by God? Do you feel like God has forgotten you? But he hasn't. He loves you. He loves you more than you can ever imagine. And in, in times of loneliness, um, he's always there. Um, he's he's right there with us and we say okay well i need i need somebody to to touch i need i need a face i need to see a smile <laughs> um something like that we we just want to we want to sense with our five senses and we can't always do that um mm -hmm. Especially, you know, as we're, you know, COVID has, has isolated a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I happen to live in a part of the country where we haven't really been isolated that much. We've actually been in church since the uh, middle of May or so. Um, we walk into stores. Um, very few people even, do I say this? Uh, <laughs> very few of us even wear masks because we don't see the need. Um, so uh, life for us in this area seems to be pretty normal. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people, I hear so many people say, um, as a matter of fact, I just heard from somebody the other day that said um, their husband her, her husband didn't want her to go to church and she was concerned that this was a maybe an attack against God he was angry with God but you know I think it's more fear uh, because he you know if they're the only two people in the house uh, he's afraid that she's going to get something and then he'll lose the only personal contact he has mm -hmm. And uh, so there's a lot of fear and loneliness. Sure. Um, so, um, 
and I, I say it that way because just less than two weeks ago, my sister, who's been living with me for nearly 40 years, died. And we've been together for a long, long time. Um, she was my constant companion. She was my best friend. And she's gone. And uh, I'm alone in the house. And, uh, you know, what, loneliness can be. But I want to tell you what God has done for me. Um, so many people have prayed. And I, I know that Jesus is right here. Because uh, rather than feeling frustration or, um, you know, that, that terrible, terrible sorrow uh, from when somebody dies that's this close to you, um, he has given me comfort. He has given me peace um, that is supernatural. And how did he do that? Um, I know it's because people pray, mm -hmm. but I also know that it's because I am reading the Bible. Uh, the Psalms are absolutely wonderful places to go when you feel lonely or sad, um, when, when life just simply isn't handing you the, the basket of flowers that you thought it should. Um, you know, the, the Psalms, David, who wrote so many of them, knew all of these things. David was isolated from his family. Um, his dad-in-law tried to kill him. You know, uh, people, people hated him. Uh, his friends or people he thought he, the, who were his friends turned him in to tell the king where, where he was. And he'd ask God, God, are they going to turn me in? And God said, yes, they will. Uh, David ran for, for his life for over three years. And the way he finally uh, escaped that constant, constant threat of, of danger, of, of death, was to go to the enemy. He went to the enemy for asylum. And now he's accused of being a traitor. Uh, people didn't trust him. And so when you, when you read the Psalms, Think about that when you see them. D David is crying out to God. And yet almost every single psalm that you will read will end in trusting in the Lord, mm -hmm. trusting in him. You are my strength. You are my salvation. You are my uh, shield. You're my fortress. Uh, it's constant from David. And so when you feel this way, uh, go to the Psalms. They will they will provide comfort to you, um, and that's let Jesus talk to you through them. Uh, let Him calm you down and calm your spirit and give you that joy, that comfort that only He can give. Has have you been able to do that over the last few weeks? As you're maybe feeling lonely and uh... yes. I, and stuff like that. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, it's uh, people ask me how I am, mm -hmm. uh, and I say supernaturally blessed, mm -hmm. uh, simply because God has given me something that I I have never experienced this way before. Even when my mom died, um, and and uh, I missed her so much, mm -hmm. uh, but. Even that time was not like it is now. Um, this one is just there. I, I, I can't even explain it. Um, uh, <laughs> it doesn't take much for me to start to cry uh, because what God, God is so incredibly good. Uh, he, has, he has given me peace. He has given me joy. 
uh, we haven't even had the memorial service for my sister. Uh, and yet he has given me joy and he, he sustains my life. Uh, there, there would be so much to fear um, if, I, if I let it. But uh, Jesus is right here. I have no reason to let the fear come in. Mm -hmm. And we hope uh, you guys can be encouraged by the way uh, the Lord has allowed Jane to go through this difficult trial in her life. If you're going through something similarly difficult or if you're just feeling lonely and you're not seeing that many people too, we, we pray that you'd uh, take encouragement from this and also maybe read through the Psalms as she was uh, suggesting. Do you have any specific Psalms they should take a look at? 34, 37, 46, 91. <laughs> uh, those are some of my favorites right now. Um, uh, but the, you know, every time I open the Bible uh, and the different Psalm, and it just speaks to me. And, and I know that if, if you, if you are feeling this way, just open the Psalm and let, the, let Jesus talk to you there. Um, let him be your comfort. Let him be your friend. He says he's your friend that sticks closer to you than a brother. Um, and, and he's there for you. Listen, as you read, listen to his voice and let him speak to you. He will. Yeah. And yeah, being a Christian isn't just about, you know, getting forgiveness for your sins. It's about the day-to-day -day life of walking with Jesus and, um, yeah, him always being there for you in the good and the bad. So especially now, and it might be a bad time for you. Uh, now more than ever is a great time to to deepen your relationship with the Lord. So we hope that that's encouraging to you. And if you w want to have some help doing that, you can always send this Facebook page a message. Jan answers a lot of those uh, messages that come in, her and her team. Or you can just... Um, go to our website, godlife.com, and click the connect button up at the top, and you'll also get connected to a wonderful online volunteer like Jan, uh, who can help answer any questions you might have, or just uh, keep throwing scripture at you and uh, talking about it with you. <laughs> We, yeah, we don't just simply throw strict scripture at you. <laughs> um, I know what you're saying, Kyle. And, yeah. uh, but it is, the scripture is real. Uh, it is Jesus talking to us. Um, it, is, it is his voice. Uh, the Bible says he is the word. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody, uh, I, I often get the question, well, why doesn't God just talk to me? personally why doesn't he just talk to me mm -hmm. and i always say um look if if you or i say something to each other um it's you know their words mm -hmm. and so 15 minutes later i might have forgotten what you said and mm -hmm. i may have rephrased it in a way that you didn't mean mm -hmm. um but in, in legal talk today, we say a contract is a contract. If it's signed, it's a contract that can't be broken. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what the Bible is. It's God's contract to us. We didn't have to sign it. He did. Mm -hmm. And he signed it in blood, his own blood. It's a signed contract. And he cannot break that. If if God could break even one of his promises, he wouldn't be God. And so he's, he's here. You have a written contract from him. And as you read it, it's him speaking back to you. Uh, I just said to somebody today, uh, memorize Bible verses. Because when you're busy, when you're not thinking about something or whatever, he'll bring them back to your mind, those verses, and he'll use them to speak to you. And he'll, he'll give you, uh, I mean, amazing, uh, the, the time, uh, like in the Bible, um, Jesus calmed the storm uh, when, uh, when the disciples were in the boat, and Jesus simply said, peace, be still. And he calmed the storm. Well, over and over, those words, peace, be still, 
come to my head right now. And it is Jesus saying, peace, be still, it's okay. I'll get you through. And his written contract says that that's true. Mm -hmm. So I have nothing to doubt. I have nothing to fear. I have, sure, I'm going to miss my sister like crazy. Um, but I know where she is. I know that she's a, she was a believer in Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so the moment she took her last breath here, the next breath was in heaven with Jesus. So that is a promise. That is his written contract mm -hmm. with us. And I know it's true. And so that gives me um, that, that gives me a piece that I can't even imagine possible. Um, for example, we could, people die of long diseases or terrible diseases or terrible pain or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the, the family that goes through that, you know, that, that time of suffering, it's, it's hard, you know, your, your loneliness builds and builds and builds. Uh, but like my sister, I mean, she was gone in a moment, mm -hmm. one, two minutes, two, not even two minutes uh, from the time that she made her last, she, she wrote something into her computer screen and two minutes later, she was completely gone. There's no, there's no pain on her face. Mm -hmm. There was no, no sign of struggle. And it was as if God just simply kissed her forehead and said, come home with me. And, you know, to me, for me, that's a shock. Mm -hmm. That's a shock to my system. But when I think about it, she didn't have to suffer. She didn't, she didn't have a long drawn out, mm -hmm. uh, which is something she was kind of afraid of. Um, that long drawn out disease or something, you know, that would take her and she wouldn't be able to do this and she wouldn't be able to do that. She was losing her sight. Uh, and she loved, she loved to read, uh, and she was losing the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. And so God just said, okay, come on home. And even though it's a shock for me, mm -hmm. it is still a blessing because I know that she didn't have to go through all that. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, we are praying for you, Jane, and I'm sure everyone who's commenting, we've got, uh, Dorothy. Leslie, a bunch of other people. Thank you for watching this and for leaving your comments as we've been talking. I'm sure they're praying for you as well. Um, Thank you. And, and I pray for you too. If you're lonely, um, write to us and tell us. We'll be your friends. We'll be, uh, we'll be here to tell you, show you how Jesus will talk to you. Come and write to us. Mm -hmm. And um, let us be your friends because we're here. We care. Um, we, we do love you and we want you to love Jesus and understand his love for you too. Yes. Yes. So just leave us a message on, on Facebook messenger or go to our website to get connected. We'd love to talk more with you. Um, we're going to pray and then we'll get out of here. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to, uh, see how you work through difficult times and how, uh, your presence can be felt even when we're feeling the most lonely we could possibly feel. We pray for Jana; as she's dealing with the loss of her sister. And we just thank you that it wasn't a long drawn out process, that you did take her home quick. Uh, we just pray for the times upcoming where uh, loneliness or despair or anything like that could be creeping in, uh, that you would remind her of the truths in your word, uh, the contract that you signed with us. Uh, the, the covenant that you have promised to us. We pray that you'd uh, be with us all today and the rest of this week. Uh, we love you and we, we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Kyle. No problem. And thanks to all you guys who've been watching. Uh, we will catch you in two weeks. Okay.